Welcome back to another Try Harding Modern video with Kano. So, uh, today we'll be playing the same Mono Green Tron list that everybody continues wanting to watch and I continue wanting to play. Um, after Albo's suggestion for the last video of adding the relics, I think I'm going to stick with them. I'm not going to make any adjustments just yet. So, go ahead and jump into another league, shall we? Did somebody rewind the stream? Nope, nope, we're just recording the next one. These are the videos that go out on YouTube. I will run them through my automatic editor script. But you know, I figured uh, I started a little late today and the first the first league was really quick because we played like three quick matches right in a row. Um, so we can go ahead and make more Kano content, as uh, Tentative Orch put it. Yes. All right, round one, here we go. Hi, buddy. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. Lay down and relax. You're hungry, there's a bowl upstairs. All right, this seems like an okay hand. So we'll be keeping this. We are on the draw. Opponent leads on a forest and suspends crashing footfall. We'll lead on mine, play chromatic sphere. Pass the turn. Kano's canine. <laughs> it's true, he is. But on untaps, footfalls ticks down to three. They play a misty rainforest. Crack rainforest for something. Yes, this is not looking good for us. Um, I mean, we've run into a lot of Belcher, Cascade nonsense. Just like very unfair decks lately. Oh, bad for you. Opponent unsummons Chromatic Sphere. We draw Oblivion Stone. Play Sphere. Sack Sphere for green. Okay, we draw another Karn. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Yeah, I'm going to try turning the noise gate off because it does mess with the editing a bit. Um, hopefully the water softener sounds are now a dull roar as opposed to an unbearable cacophony. Uh, we draw Ancient Stirrings, so play a forest, play Ancient Stirrings. Um, we have our options of a Blast Zone, Ugin, or Relic. Uh, I'm going to take Relic just because it's another cycle here. Grix's Death Shadow? Well, we're gonna find out! Everybody was saying it's, you know, it's a dominant part of the metagame, and I just haven't seen it. So I'm out here making a fool of myself, like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Alright, uh, opponent cascades into some rhinos. They untap, rhinos ticking down. Opponent plays a Wooded Foothills. They go to combat. Attack for eight. Sure. We take 8, go to 12. Opponent passes. So let's go ahead and cycle Relic. It's the Water Softener. I had my noise gate on, um, but people are like, Kano, your voice gets cut off. And it's like, yeah, but the other option is this. So um, I'm recording out of an unfinished basement, for those of you that don't know, and that's one of the reasons I'm moving. Maybe on the play, it not, might not be worth it for Forces for Blood Moon. Um, I think it's still worth it for Forces for Blood Moon. Um, so they're going to cast Borrower, most likely. Uh, I think I'm going to play out Oblivion Stone. And then Chromatic Sphere. This gives us two draws at a fifth land to potentially um, kill all of our opponent's attackers. If we had gotten Tron this turn, we would have had other options, but we just, we don't. Okay, that's 16 damage, and we're dead. That's not the truth, Silver. Don't don't go on the internet and tell lies. Um, okay, let's drop. I think we dropped the relics again. Um, okay, run it back. The veils, Kano. The veils. I don't think the. Oh, fine. Veils in. Uh, Karn, Oblivion Stone out for veils. They're in. <laughs> Just elbows over there panicking. <laughs> All right, he bet on me winning, so. Um, we do have a Veil of Summer, we do have a Yavi Maya, Ancient Stirrings isn't bad. Uh, I think we have better sixes than this, though. This is tempting. No, I don't, I don't bring in Chalice or Pithing Needle, with the exception of, like, maybe against Hammer, uh, just for the option of, like, having it in your opener, but, okay. This, I, I am gonna keep. I don't want to go to five and risk a much worse hand than this. I'm glad the tokens don't have haste. Um, yeah, we'll put back a Chromatic Sphere. We're still going to try for the, the turn 3 Tron, of course. Opponent has a Gemstone Cavern start. 
That's how you know this is going to be a fair and interactive game of magic. They pitched Force of Vigor. <laughs> All right. Pass the turn. But it plays a Wooded Foothills and passes. We untap. We draw Karn, Great Creator. Cycle Star for green. We get a Sylvan Scrying. Play a Forest. Ancient Stirrings. I'm doing this because there's some chance they would try and counter. So I want to have the Veil of Summer ready. We get Nurse's Mine. Pass the turn. <laughs> okay. Opponent untaps. Does not have a third land. Okay. We draw Expedition Map. That lets me hold up Veil of Summer, so I'm going to do that. Although, if they, like, forced pitching a blue card there, I probably would have just cast Sylvan Scrying. That's the only deck you've ever seen a Gemstone Caverns in? Well, then you never watched me play Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam was a deck... Um, the version that I played had an 8-card turn 2 kill. Um, and out of approximately 2,000 games played with it, it only ever happened twice. Um, so let's go ahead and get Power Plant. We draw an Ulamog, so play Karn. Karn resolves. Down tick on Gemstone Caverns, and the game is over. All right, run it back. Uh, we're on the draw. We have two-thirds of Tron. We have multiple redundant threats. Did the opponent mulligan? They did mulligan to six. I think I am going to mulligan as well. I mean, this does get to Tron by turn four. Let's see if they keep six. If they go to five, I think I will keep this hand. They kept six. All right, all right. We'll try it. We'll try it. I'm going to put back basic forest. Okay, opponent leads on Misty. Gets a basic forest. Suspends crashing footfalls. We draw a power plant. Play expedition map. And are now on the way to turn three Tron. Force doesn't hit worm coil, at least. That's true. Opponent plays a Scalding Tarn. Passes. We draw mine. Play power plant. Pass the turn. They crack Scalding Tarn. If they get a basic island, they're setting up for Blood Moon. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder what they're going to cast this turn. Hmm, red land? Man, it's like I'm psychic. All right, let's go get tower. We draw another tower. Um, I don't think they play land destruction, so I think it's beneficial to actually play out the forest. And we can get a second forest just in case. Blast zone, sanctum, the other tech lands we have probably aren't going to matter. Uh, best top deck is... Karn, Great Creator. Shardless Agent into another Crashing Footfalls is pretty bad. Uh, Chromatic Star is not Karn, Great Creator. So let's play it, cycle it. Get an Ulamog. Um, play Tower. Pass the turn. And now uh, I th think we're just dead. Um, I don't think there's anything we can top deck. If we drew Oblivion Stone last turn, we could play it, untap, and then activate it. Um, but we're not going to have enough mana. We can't force. Well, we can force, but then we can't play anything else. Um, so I think I think we're just dead. Play Sphere. Sack Sphere for green. We get a map. Well, it doesn't do anything. All right. See, that's how you play Blood Moon versus Tron. You put a very, very fast threat onto the board, then you play Blood Moon. You don't play Blood Moon, lock yourself out of the game, and then just let Tron play lands until they can hard cast stuff. Oh, I gotta close the prediction. My bad. Doubters win. Now we'll never see Grix's Death Shadow. It's not my fault. It's not my fault we're not playing against the meta. <laughs> Says only man who could accept fault for his actions. Ugh. All right, round two. All right, we'll play first. Um, I mean, it's potentially Tron, quickly. Yes, it is, you're playing Tron. It's what people want to see. So we have two options with this. We can like lead on forest and go stirrings route. I think I'm actually gonna lead on the relic though. Increases our chance of an actual turn three Tron play as opposed to turn four. Should not be auto yielded. Oh good, it's amulet. Y'all ready to get tightened? Oh, wait. Tron things are happening. <laughs> Fast the turn. Opponent untaps. They draw. They play cavern. 
Naming giant. Explore. Hey, Tarek, how's it going? Welcome to the second League of Tron for the Happy night. Happy birthday! Opponent, uh, Bounces Cavern. Okay, well, we're really hoping we draw Karn Liberated. Great Creator would also work, but Liberated is what we want to draw here. We draw the tower. Untap. Chromatic Star. Um, okay. I think we go the, the Great Creator route here. We have to try and hit it off of Ancient Stirrings. Sack Star for green. We draw Great Creator. Oh, what an excellent top deck. Wish. Get Coding. Play Coding. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. Shut off Growth Chamber. <laughs> Can do Sigma. <clears throat> opponent plays a second Growth Chamber. Picking up um, Castle Garenbrig. They got a discard. They discard Cavern. We draw Relic. Play a Forest. Ancient Stirrings. Hoping for a big Karn. Uh, Ulamog got to do it, though. Immediately blow, blow up a Growth Chamber. Play Worm Coil. Okay. Uh, force coming in. Uh, Relic going out. And I'm not bringing in Veil. Tron sucks. Tron's just a very consistent deck. It consistently does exactly one thing, which is kind of ideal when you do a powerful thing. Ban him! <laughs> uh. I mean, it's kind of amazing that, like, play 7 drop on turn 3 is still relevant in a format where, like, people are casting incredibly broken stuff on the first two turns of the game without paying mana for it. It's a very Timmy deck, I think. Um... I think this is going to be too slow. If there was a Force of Vigor in this hand, this would be a snap keep. Seeing as have you haven't made any punts today, Tron's obviously too consistent. I mean, you have to know how to play the deck, too. How well does Damping Sphere work against Amulet Titan? Um, if you're playing Tron, you're shutting yourself off, too. Did they mulligan? They did. I am going to mulligan. Like, in the ideal circumstance, this hand's great, but this hand is worse. I will be going to five. I will be going to four. All right. Well, that was the best hand we've seen yet. So put back a Karn, put back an O-Stone, and put back a Blast Zone. Uh, actually, put back a Karn, put back an O-Stone, put back a Sanctum. Let's go. Bunna leads on Breeding Pool, untapped into Amulet of Vigor. We untap, we draw a Forest, play Power Plant, play Expedition Map. Pass the turn. I mean, this could very well be turn three Tron. We just have the top deck of Tron land. Opponent plays a Selesnia Sanctuary. Destroy Amulet. I mean, that's the plan. It's just probably going to happen way too late. Opponent floated two mana instead of three mana. They didn't tap Breeding Pool in time. Okay. We draw another Expedition map. Um, all right, play a forest, pass the turn, have to top deck a different Tron land, yes we do. Opponent untaps. I have played it in the past. Opponent plays an Urza Saga, and plays a Tireless Tracker. Let's go get an Urza's Mine. Tracker enters the battlefield. We draw Sylvan Scrying, play Urza's Mine, play Expedition Map, pass the turn. Okay, opponent untaps, they draw a card, Saga ticks up to two. They play a Castle Garenbrig, which will untap, and they get a clue. Okay, opponent goes to combat, attacks us for three, we go to 17, let's go get a tower. We get a Force of Vigor. That makes my life a lot easier. So play a tower, play Karn, kill Tracker. Pass the turn. Stop on my opponent's upkeep. Opponent gonna make a token. So I want to hit Saga and Amulet, but I also want to keep Karn around, but I also don't want to die to the same double Amulet shenanigans. So I think what we do is kill Saga and the token here. I think if opponent had any sort of faster combo, they would have done it a lot sooner. Has to be Saga Amulet. Well, we'll see if I make this mistake twice. 
They did mulligan, right? And they also misplayed a turn, so... <laughs> I'm gonna get completely wrecked. <laughs> so, let's, let's find out. They did not activate in response to make a token. That's interesting. That means they have something else they want to do with their mana. They get a Titan now? Yeah, if they have one. And they have another Bounce Land. Maybe we need to start playing Exploratron again. Just to make sure we can get all our lands onto the battlefield fast enough. Okay, they replay Breeding Pool. This does not allow them to get Titan. Uh, we draw a Forest. Um, I think I have to lose Karn anyway and take out Sanctuary. So we're going to play Blast Zone because any mana gets them to six mana. Yeah, let's let's kill the Sanctuary. We're going to have to top deck another threat. Opponent cracks a clue to draw a card. I could sack Blast Zone, but I would do that in response to like an Azusa or something. All right, hang on. Noise gate coming back on. That is, if it if it lets me. And it filters. Okay, so now you should only hear me when I'm talking, as opposed to all of that noise all the time. My thought process with this line is, if they uh, play a tap land, they can untap it. And then if they play like an Azusa or something, we can blow up the amulet. And then the only way that that goes wrong is if opponent has a second amulet. I was already petting him, but Porter, you're a good boy. Sissia thinks you're a good boy. Yeah. Okay, opponent plays a tap land after floating green. So if they cast, like, a an explore effect here, I think I do crack the blast zone. It's possible I should have just done it immediately, but yes, he is. Grazer. Um, I can actually kill the Grazer in response to its ability. So they don't get the untap. Why did I choose to get him fixed? Um, I didn't have a ton of choice in it. I didn't really want to, but I did, um, I did let him stay intact for as long as possible so that he would have the best hip development that he could, because with labs and stuff, that is potentially an issue. I did have enough control over that. Draw Karn. Um, so we're going to play Karn. The question is, do we take out a land or do we take out the Dryad? And I think the answer is we have to take out the Dryad. Um, opponent does not have double green to activate Castle, at least as far as I know. What was the reason it ended up happening? Um, well, part of it is the original co-owner of the dog. Part of it is some of the law around here. So, opponent plays a second Boros Garrison. They pick it back up. Pick up Vesuva again. Not sure what that's about. He's my good boy, though. He's a stinky boy. Probably needs a bath. It's been a little too cold to take one. All right. We untap. We draw Karn Great Creator, which makes this a whole lot easier. Because um, now we can pretty much just take out as much of our opponent's mana as possible. Um, for... I mean, so there is the whole, like, if he escapes uh, containment, as an example. Um, you know, he can uh, impregnate another dog, like that kind of a thing. Um, there are, for some breeds, there are health reasons to um, either get them fixed or not get them fixed. Or, like, for labs in this instance, uh, like, wait uh, for a period of time. It is, uh, for, for some people, it is an aggression thing, especially with male dogs. I'm not, like, you know, I'm not going to say one way or another that you should or shouldn't do something. So, it's kind of a tough choice. And I wouldn't fault anybody for doing one thing over another. It's with good reason. All right, we beat Amulet Titan through some miracle. On to round three. Was there no prediction open for that one? Do we not have a prediction open? So, I mean... So with that in particular, um, generally, if if you get a dog fixed, you you kind of keep the dog in a state of like permanent adolescence in a way, um, and a lot of a lot of more aggressive behaviors don't happen, uh, like territorial reasons, like or like dogs be are less territorial when they're fixed because they don't have as much testosterone in the case of male dogs. That's the thinking on it anyway. I'm not saying that that's correct, I'm not a veterinarian, but 
that's what a lot of people say. And that's like that's what my vet was telling me. And for male dogs, it can be an issue if they mark a lot too. Like if they'll, they'll pee in the house to like mark stuff as their territory. Um, this is not a keepable hand, so I think I've got a mulligan this. This is better. I'm against a Luris deck. I think I'm going to keep this because of Karn Great Creator, and I'm going to put back Sanctum. So best of luck deciding on that. I hope this isn't Hammer, because if this is Hammer, we really don't have a chance. Well, I mean, like, at about a year is is when when Porter uh, got fixed. So. It looks like this might actually be Luris Burn or Luris Jund. We all agree that we should fix Luris. <laughs> yeah, but we got a, a mean, mean street cat. We got to do something about that. Yes, I have heard of that. Um, Rodeo san, I, I have heard of that. That's the kind of thing that's like just crazy to me. Um, I can take two extra damage to play this other Chromatic Star, and I think I'm going to. Simply because we have to get to Tron. This is Luris Burn, which uh, Albo mentioned is in the metagame, and I was like, that's another deck that I haven't seen. Tower, please. Thank you. Rest of the bottom, pass the turn. Okay, Puna plays a Swift Spear and suspends a Rift Bolt, then attacks for four. We take four and go to 11. Draw an Ugin. Play Worm Coil. This is probably going to come down to whether or not they have main deck Skullcrack. Because Ugin is going to wipe their board, and then we're going to get in with Worm Coil. One of the ways that Burn frequently will try to counteract your life gain, especially if you turn three Tron into Worm Coil, is they will leave back a blocker um, and Lightning Bolt their blocker. Yeah, Worm Coil should be excellent here. This is basically the matchup that Worm Coil's in the deck for. Um, because without it, it's a really difficult matchup. I think after this, I'm going to have to uh, take a... After this game, I'm going to have to take a quick break for um, a certain uh, brown canine to go O-U-T. Because he just walked over here and dropped a rancid fart and then looked at me like, what are you going to do about it? Because <laughs> this is... Like, however this progresses is your decision. <laughs> so... All right, a podcast Rift Bolt. <laughs> so I will I will have to take a couple minute break after uh, after this match, which is hopefully quick. One of them is going to Rift Bolt Worm Coil. So they're actually going to go and try and bolt down the Worm Coil engine. Porter is, Porter is scared of his own farts. He has farted himself awake because he is a majestic creature. He's also scared of sneezes. If anybody sneezes, Porter like will go from like completely like sleeping like a rock to across and out the room. So... So I think my opponent is like literally triple bolting to kill all of the life-linking worm coil tokens, or like the the main body of worm coil, and then the uh, the life-linking portion of worm coil. I hope I'm not dead because that's ridiculous. I know, buddy. You gotta wait just a little longer, a little bit more, okay? Yeah, it it did save us six damage directly to our face, potentially more. I could have blocked with the death touch token and then started attacking with the life-link token. That probably would have been a better route. I am intending on playing Ugin next turn. Target creature gains double strike. It's not like it has trample. I mean, yeah, definitely, um, definitely keeping or blocking with the death touch and keeping the life link was the play. So that was a mistake on my part. Hopefully it won't matter. So we're going to play a forest. Play Ugin. All right. Opponent concedes to an Ugin. Um, I may want force to deal with uh, either a Damping Sphere or an Eidolon. And I think that is somewhat reasonable as compared to, like, a Sundering Titan. I think I'm actually going to bring the fourth Worm Coil in as well, because Ulamog is a bit ambitious, shall we say. Opponent is playing Luris, so I think I'm going to keep one Relic in the deck, but I am going to drop the other. All right, I can shut the Noise Gate off and go back to normal, normal volume now, considering that the Water Softener has stopped running. Ugin dealt three damage and gained three life? No, unfortunately. That would make him way better than he is. All right, game two. Uh, this is not a keepable hand versus burn. Um, there is some potential here. This might be too slow, especially on the draw. Opponent mulligan to six. Now mulligans and burn hurt a lot more than mulligans and Tron. Uh, so we're, we're gonna see if our opponent goes to five or not. I think if my opponent mulligans to five, I will keep this hand. I'll probably, I, I'm still like on the fence, but if they, they go to five they do not all right um i mean it's game two let's go ahead 
Um, we're gonna put back, I think, I think we put back an expedition map. Okay, opponent leads on Dragon's Rage Channeler. We play Chromatic Star. Opponent plays a second Sunbaked Canyon, hits us for one. Uh, we get skewered. They get to surveil. Then they pass. We untap. We draw expedition map. Sack star for green. Tower power plant. Come on. Opponent silences us. That's rude. Because that even... I, I mean, against Tron, it is like a time warp, but I don't know that that's good, necessarily. Like, if you're playing burn, you should probably just be playing a lightning bolt in that slot, but what do I know? Um, opponent attacks us for one. We go to 15. Then they pass. We untap. Draw Oblivion Stone. Sylvan Scrying. Get a power plant. Play power plant. And I could play out Expedition Map. I actually think playing Star is better. And Star is better than Sphere here because of the potential for our opponent to be casting Smash to Smithereens. Um, if they Smash to Smithereens, we take damage, but we at least draw a card. There's the Smash to Smithereens. So we still get to draw a card. We draw a power plant. Unfortunately, is not a tower. <laughs> Opponent sacks a Sunbaked Canyon to give their Dragon's Rage Channeler flying. We draw a Force of Vigor. So I can Sylvan Scrying for tower. Um, I'm going to try a redraw first. Uh, that didn't work. So Sylvan Scrying. Let's get a tower. Play a tower. And I can either Expedition Map for Blast Zone, or I can play Oblivion Stone. I think playing Oblivion Stone is better. Pass the turn. Why else would you play it? Silence? Man, three mana to Fairy plus Silence is just one mana Time Walk. It's it's fantastic, and I have done that. So opponent goes to combat. They're going to hit us for three, take us to six. They have three damage flying in from off screen. And Worm Coil cannot block... Um, the Dragon's Rage channel. So, this is fantastic, actually. Play Ugin. Kill Dragon's Rage Channeler. And if they don't immediately bolt Ugin, we can play a Worm Coil. I mean, they wouldn't immediately bolt Ugin if they had a bolt, because they would just bolt our face and then bolt our face. <laughs> like, and we would be dead. Yep. Is that it? There it is. All right. Gotten beat by Silence Burn. <laughs> Silver Bordered, resubscribed at tier one. 14 month streak. Happy birthday, you're dead to bolt. <laughs> Feels that way. Still not my birthday, though. Almost, buddy. We're almost there. All right, I would like to play first. There's a huge advantage in this matchup. Uh, this hand is not great. This hand is like 5% better. Going to five. Uh, I think I'm going to have to work with this. I don't like it, but I think that's what I got to do. And I need to put back Ancient Stirrings. We're going to need the Sylvan Scrying, I think. Burns in the position to kind of innovate lately. I don't think I don't think Silence is where it needs to go. Um, silence is one of those things that's like generally staying in the realm of like a combo deck. Cast Silence and then goes off. Like Eggs or Ad Nauseum or something like that. Burn... For the Tron matchup, <laughs> it seems like a stretch. I mean, it was it was kind of good. Uh, took us off of casting a spell, I'm pretty sure. So I can't say it was bad. I just I think we would have been dead sooner had that been a bolt. Let's go ahead and sack for green. <gasps> Silence again. <laughs> we draw a worm coil. Now this does significantly take us off of like tempo because we can't play out our stars but it plays a mountain now if they play a uh elemental we could be in trouble eidolon of the great rebel that's the card that i'm thinking of opponent suspends a rift bolt we draw karn great creator play star sack star for green we draw power plant sylvan scrying go get mine Pass the turn. Stars! Opponent <laughs> bolts our face. They untap. Rift bolt coming off suspend. They bolt our face. They play a mountain. They bolt our face. Then they pass. 
We untap and draw sphere. Play mine. Play worm coil. I think my opponent likely has me beaten. Um, just depending on what happens here. There's also some notion that like maybe I should have played Karn, put Chalice on one, or put Chalice on two. I mean, burn is pretty fair in terms of like what it is and does. And a lot of unfair things are happening in the format. They smash my star and let me draw a card. It's interesting. I really hope they don't have a skull crack, because that would be bad. Opponent suspends a rift bolt. We untap, we draw a second Worm Coil Engine, go to combat, attack for six, see if they've got that Skull Crack. They do, so we gain no life. There's a really good chance I'm just dead. Mm. Let's sack for green and Ancient Stones. Okay, another tower is nice. Does that change anything? I can get anything that's seven mana or less, if I wish. Bridge doesn't do it. In fact, bridge hurts me. Um, okay, let's Ancient Stirrings. I can Ulamog. So we're going to do that. It doesn't save us from a Bolt, because they have a Rift Bolt on Suspend. It saves us from a Boros Charm, potentially, or a Hasty Ground Creature. I think we're still dead. Bobble? You're going to kill me on my upkeep with a Bolt? Oh, you jerk! Oh, they didn't- they didn't- they didn't try it! Uh, they didn't think they were gonna draw an instant speed lightning bolt, they just conceded! Alright, well we're two and one, I'm gonna take a very quick break here, I have to let my dog out, he really needs to go. I will be right back and we will finish up. And we're back. Hopefully I didn't lose literally everyone watching the stream. Round four, shall we do it? It is not my birthday, oh my gosh. Prediction? Uh, we won that one. So, prediction completed. It's it's right here! Two and one! Oh my gosh. Alright, round four, here we go. Apparently my sideboard is very tiny. Um, so this is, I think, a mulligan. This, this is a little better. I think I will keep this one. Um, we don't have anything to do early, so hopefully, hopefully we draw one of our, like, 18 one-drops. Stream says it's my birthday. What? It shouldn't. Are you editing? Are you abusing your moderator slash editor powers, Sigma? I would never. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't believe you. No, <laughs> it's not my birthday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, opponent hits a Karn off the top of our deck. How, whenever you vote and you're the only person on that side, you're the one that wins. Oh my gosh. Uh, we draw an Ugin the Ineffable. It's a draw card. Uh, we draw a Chromatic Sphere. So play a Power Plant. Play Sphere. Sack Sphere for green. Ancient Stirrings. All top decked, by the way. And Tower. Perfect. Pass the turn. Opponent going to bolt our face, manipulate their own top deck. We go down to 15. They leave whatever it is on top, on top. Definitely not Witch Magic at work. We get hit for three, they get a treasure, they exile a forest. Uh, they like 100% have a counter spell. Um, so we're going to try a Karn. Archmage's Charm, okay. So the reason that I did that as opposed to playing out Worm Coil, Worm Coil is something that's very difficult for them to answer once it hits the battlefield. And if we draw another tower, we can play Ugin the Ineffable into Worm Coil Engine, potentially. When it plays a land, they're going to hit us for three. We're going to go to nine. So they get a treasure, they exile a tower. We would have drawn a tower. We untap, we draw a Sundering Titan. Well, I mean, I'm not going to not try and cast a Sundering Titan. Um, I'm not going to Sack Sanctum yet. Can I have another Archmage's Charm? <sighs> I put another Scalding Tarn in the grave. All right. Opponent untaps, they attack us for three, we go to six. They exile Karn, great creator. They may actually cast this to like stop me from cycling or something. They cast Expressive Iteration, putting Unholy Heat in the grave. They exile an Unholy Heat, then they pass the turn. We untap, we draw an Oblivion Stone. 
Um, I could just play and activate Oblivion Stone. If my opponent has a Counterspell, they have a Counterspell. Like, it doesn't really matter what we play at this point. Um, Oblivion Stone is the most forgiving, because then I can play Worm Coil Engine after the fact, so we're going to try that. I imagine they'll counter this, if they have a Counterspell. Okay. Um, in that case, we are just going to play Forest and Pass. I could have activated it immediately, but there's a chance they can play Creatures with Haste. Yeah, it might be Bolt Bolt. They put an Unholy Heat into the grave. They're going to look at our top deck and draw a card. They cast Expressive Iteration. They're not using any of their treasure token mana. I suppose I should have done this like immediately because they got additional like top deck manipulations out of it. Exile a Spire Bluff Canal. They play it tapped. Blow up all the treasures. Okay. We untap, they draw a card, we draw Expedition Map. So I have 9 mana, um, which means I can play Ugin for 6. Then I can play Map for free. I can then activate Map. Get another Tower, play Tower, and play Worm Coil. And then uptick Ugin. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a, play a Spire Bluff Canal. Or they play an island, I think, excuse me. They play a Merc Tide, delving no instants and sorceries. And they play a second Merc Tide, delving all the instants and sorceries. I, I mean, I guess, yes, that was the order if you were going to play multiple. That makes sense. Um, kill a Merc Tide. Oh, this, co this only costs five. Uh, play Karn. Sack Sanctum. Get another Worm Coil. Kill the other Merc Tide. Play Chromatic Star. I guess I should have cycled for green first, for basically free. Um, no sense in playing the Avimaya and fixing their mana. Play the other Worm Coil. Go to combat. Well, not, I guess they're not playing greed, so it wouldn't be fixing their mana, but... Okay, uh, they do play... Um, they do play Blood Moon, so we do need Force of Vigor. Uh, we will need Veils of Summer for the counter spells. Worm Coil Engine's very good against them. Sundering Titan is a little bit less good, as is Ugin. Um, so I'm actually going to cut those. Actually, Ugin is better than Karn Liberated is in the general sense. Um, I don't want to cut the Relics. Uh, I also don't really want to cut the Oblivion Stones. This is So this particular version of the list is one reason why the sideboard is the way it is. It's not playing like four Force of Vigors is because it's very difficult for me to actually um, determine which of the main deck cards I need to keep versus which of the ones I can uh, decrease in number. I think I have to cut an Oblivion Stone and just have a couple in the wishboard and probably go down to two Karn Liberateds. They are in general not very good against our opponent's deck because our opponent plays a whole bunch of cheap threats. Um, and a couple of expensive threats. Uh, I mean, his hand draws a bunch of cards. And, like, we have Ancient Stirrings and Expedition Map, so... I think we can do better on six. This is not a better six. Um, I mean, it's not bad. I, actually, this this is a better six, I think. So I'm going to put back Ulamog, and I'm actually going to keep this. Opponent leads on Spire Bluff Canal after mulliganing to six, and plays Ragavan immediately. We untap, we draw Worm Coil Engine, so lead on Chromatic Sphere, pass the turn. Now we can see what our next two draws are, um, and depending on whether or not they are a second Tron land that we don't have, we can cast Sylvan Scrying or we can cast Ancient Stirrings. Opponent attacks us for two, they're going to make a treasure, they're going to take us to 18. They exile Ugin, okay, and they're going to play a Blood Moon. Okay, we draw a star, so... We did get a second Tron lands. This would have been an excellent Tron hand. We're going to Sylvan Scrying, and we're going to go get a basic Forest. Pass the turn. And we're going to hope that we can just last long enough to start playing Threats. Um, and then our opponent... I mean, Ragavan keeps them uh, fueled with blue mana. I was going to say, I hope our opponent gets locked off of blue mana, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Opponent plays our Expedition map. We untap and draw Yavi Maya. So, play the Forest. Ancient Stirrings. Um, I will take an Oblivion Stone. Rest of the bottom. Play a star. 
Pass the turn. So we do have an Oblivion Stone play. It will likely get countered. Opponent is going to map for a basic island. That way they basically have permanent counter spell mana. Uh, we would actually like to draw Veil of Summer here so that we can forcibly resolve our Oblivion Stone through a counter spell. Opponent hits us for two, takes us to 14, gets a treasure and exiles their own Oblivion Stone, which I don't think is something that our opponent is going to cast, of course. We draw a Worm Coil, so cycle star for green, see what we draw. Okay, we draw a Blast Zone. Um, I don't want to, but we basically have to just throw out Oblivion Stone. We have to get our opponent to start counterspelling stuff so that hopefully we can start resolving these Worm Coil engines. Um... We have three Worm Coil engines in hand, and we're only two turns off of casting one. Our opponent hasn't made a huge clock, uh, which is nice because, like, if they were, you know, if they had, like, a Dragon's Rage Channeler out as well, it would be very difficult for us to catch up. They hit us for two. We go to 12. They exile a card. It's an Urza's Tower. We draw Chromatic Star. So, play Chromatic Star. Cycle for green. We get a Karn Great Creator. This is another excellent draw because this is a threat that we can play on this turn and either force another counter spell. Okay. So that's two counter spells out of our opponent's hand. Now, hopefully, we can force through a Worm Coil engine. Opponent plays a Dragon's Rage Channeler. Um, when they start playing threats like this after just protecting the Raghavan for so long, it generally either means they are running out of interactive spells. Or they exiled another tower. That's not good. We, we we do want a tower on the battlefield in the off chance that we do get rid of Blood Moon. So it looks like they might be tapping out for a Murktide here. They are. We draw another forest. Play a forest. Play Worm Coil. Pass the turn. We gotta hope Worm Coils can get us there. Uh, I don't think we will. I think Yavimaya was an experiment to see if it was okay, and I don't think... Uh, I don't think those cards will exist. So we are going to attack for six here. Opponent does not block. Play second Worm Coil. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. And I can tell you that if the island one existed, High Tide becomes the most disgusting thing ever, I think. Because then they can just start playing stuff that doesn't have the island typing on it. <laughs> it's just like tech lands and stuff. Okay, we draw a Relic. Um, go to combat. Attack for 12. You get Valakutted to death. Yeah, it's a two-card combo with Valakut. Worm Coil Engine number three. <laughs> Play Relic. Uh, make him exile a card. Opponent had us very close to dead, but unfortunately I don't think they have any good answers to a resolved Worm Coil Engine. Um, their best hope is, like, Unholy Heating and stuff like that. A Plains Laker board? Well, there's the Celestial Dawn card, but that's not a land. Wormtron? Kind of. Yeah, I don't think a Murktide is going to be enough. They play another Raghavan. Right, we untap. We draw Chromatic Sphere. Play Sphere. Sack Sphere for green. We get a Karn Great Creator. So... Play Karn. Wish. Uh, let's get Chalice and put Chalice on one. Then attack for 18. All right, we got there. So I will open a prediction for the final round. What's a combo with Celestial Dawn? Uh, donate and Grindstone. <laughs> Actually, donating it um, to a player who doesn't play white mana means they can only tap for colorless. Oh, never mind. Lands you control are planes. <laughs> it just gives them rainbow mana. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I I have no idea how you would you would combo that card. Brush fires. <laughs> Blow up all your own lands. <laughs> oh man. All right, round five. Here we go. Do, do we get another treasure chest? Yeah, we'll get another treasure chest. Another chance at a 4-1 versus a Luris deck. This hand is terrible versus a Luris deck, so we're going to mulligan. Uh, this hand is a little bit better, so we're going to keep, and we're going to put back Ugin the Ineffable. 
But it leads on Marsh Flats into Overgrown Tomb, into Elvish Reclaimer. So this is probably like a Flagstones of Trocair Jane ramp. Uh, Anarchist F4, thank you for following. I appreciate it. Okay, we're getting Inquisitioned, which means no Elvish Reclaimer activation this turn. Opponent takes Sylvan Scrying. Could it be Elves? I guess it could be. Yeah, it could be Green Black Elves. Although generally they play more expensive cards than what Luris. Like, this would mean no, um, what do you call it? The Archdruid. It would mean no Archdruid. Um, Ancient Stirrings. Let's get Nurse as mine. Rest of the bottom. Players as mine. Play Chromatic Sphere. Pass the turn. Abzan. Well, according to the bot, they were last seen playing Black Green. But it plays a Swamp, and it's looking like Black Green. I imagine, though, you don't play Reclaimer without. Um, they do have Void Walkers. We have to be we have to be careful. What did you miss? Uh, we beat Murktide. Uh, play another Power Plant because they know we have it. Pass the turn. I'm not going to play the Abimaya yet because I don't have a reason. Opponent plays a Marsh Flats. Gets a Swamp. Plays Turok Dread Cantor. We lose a bunch of lands. Come on, Tower. Mine. All right, well, we can have redundant lands. Pass the turn. Just need that Urza's Tower. Inquisition. That's a whiff. Witherbloom Command. I think milling themselves and making us lose life. They fetch for a forest. And they play a Tarmogoyf. And attack for seven. Okay. Well, I need a tower to stay alive. That is not a tower. And we lose. Interesting. I've not seen a... I've not seen a just black green deck like that. No, it's just black green. Um, I think I do want Veil of Summer simply because of the amount of discard, and my opponent does have like Void Walkers and stuff. It could just be a brew, yeah. Worm Coil seems like it's going to be very good in this matchup. I kind of want to take out Ugin because my opponent's all low to the ground, and if they have Void Walkers and take an U or take an Ulamog, I mean we're going to lose. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to cut one Ulamog out of Paranoia, and um, I'll cut one Oblivion Stone. We'll try like this. I would like to play first. Hopefully they don't have Damping Sphere, because I didn't bring in Force. They probably have Damping Sphere, and I'm going to lose to it. Uh, two of the same Tron land. I'm going to mulligan that. Uh, this one at least has a Redraw and a Stirrings. Um, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put back the second Mine. Uh, 100% they lead on hand hate and take stirrings. Fetch. Shock. Bobble. Bobbling our top deck, seeing what our top deck is, getting as much information as they can. Thoughtseize. Alright, so they take ancient stirrings, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there goes ancient stirrings. We untap, they draw a card, they know we have tower. So, let's go ahead and sack for green. We get a relic. Uh, Relic is potentially good. Play Tower. Make him exile a card. Pass the turn. So I'm wondering if they're playing like Grim Flare. And they're probably playing like Grim Flare and Traverse. Just playing solid dudes with Thoughtseize back up. And Luris. And Saga. Suppose there's no reason to not play Saga. And Springleaf Drum. Okay. Then they thought sees us again. I imagine they take Worm Coil. They take O Stone. It's interesting. I'm gonna crack Relic here. <laughs> oh no. We draw Sanctum. Um, I'm gonna play the basic forest. Uh, we could get Turoct. So I want to make sure I have green mana on the board. Saga taking up to two. Hey, it's Turok. Okay, away goes Sanctum and Ulamog. Come on. Power Plant. Ancient Stirrings. Okay. Ancient Stirrings. No Power Plant. Um, I guess we just take a Redundant Mine. Play the Mine. Pass the turn. Sad days. Opponent untaps. Saga taken up to three. They make a token. So is it going to be Pithing Needle? Going to be Shadow Spear? What's the deal? Pithing Needle. 
So I wonder if they're going to name Karn, Ugin, or Map. Should have got the star, giving them the option of naming star. They name Expedition Map. They play an Urborg. They play a Voidwalker. All right, we need that power plant so I can play out this worm coil and my opponent doesn't steal it. Uh, I mean, none of my zero drops help. I can, I can wish for Pithing Needle so I can Pithing Needle Voidwalker. I do have, I can wish for like Sphere or O Stone. That's actually not that bad. Um, O Stone is too slow, I think. So I'm actually gonna wish for the chromatic sphere out of uh, out of exile, and then we have to hope they don't have a thought seize, of course. So they attack and kill Karn, attack us for five. They're leaving back Voidwalker. Okay, they're not. <laughs> so we take a bunch. Opponent plays a Goyf, then plays another Goyf. We untap, draw Worm Coil Engine, play Sphere. Power plant or bust? No power plants, just redundant towers. All right. Well, we three two two leagues in a row now. Uh, let's go ahead and open up our treasure chest. Uh, five play points, Liliana, Dreadhorde General promo, and a Casualties of War. So, uh, yeah, I think that was a pretty sweet deck by the opponent. Um, so. Who, who was the one person that bet no? <laughs> Anarchist. Sounds like you're going to win, stand to win a whole bunch of points. Um, relative to what was bet, anyway. So, no worries, no worries. Um, yeah, I still, you know, I still really like this Tron list. I will probably play this and similar iterations of Tron unless something really spicy comes up. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the stream. And if you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, exclamation point YouTube. If you're here on Twitch, we'll get you a link to my YouTube. Otherwise, the link can be found on my profile. The um, We have a Discord if you guys want to join, exclamation point Discord, same link location. Um, it's also in the description of most of my videos. And... Trying to think, what else? What else goes into these credits? You're all wonderful human beings. I really appreciate all of your support. And um, I'll still be playing Tron. I might do something a little zanier for next draft. We'll see. But oh, if you're still here and you haven't yet, please consider following. I'd really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this content, you enjoy watching me play Tron or other stuff, uh, it'd mean a lot to me if you did. And with that being said. I'm going to go ahead and... Happy birthday! Still not my birthday. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we will roll credits. Good night, everybody. Thanks for showing up, vampire.